In this video, we're going to work on the circle jig that attaches to our bandsaw base that we made in the last video. It's held on by magnets as well as a nut. It has a little window here so we can set our size and works off a pin in the center. Stick around to the end for a little bit more advanced version that I think is much better than just this. To get started, we really need to set our fence on our table saw to be the exact width that we cut on our bandsaw. So we'll take the width here, we'll flip it over, and we'll line up our blade. We don't want it to catch in any way. I'll take a scrap piece of plywood, and when I put this on here, I want to make sure that I have a little bit left over beyond the bandsaw sled. I will set it the width going the other direction. And now I want two different tracks, one here and one here, that will fit underneath our piece of plywood. So I'll take the scrap that I have left over and I'm gonna cut two half inch sections. And this is half inch thick plywood. Now I'll take these two pieces and they're gonna glue on to the end. We obviously wanna make sure that we don't glue on this side, the layers, but on this back side. And now we'll give this a couple hours to dry. Now we want this to attach to our base like this. I'll be using magnets to lock it in place. We wanna make holes in each of the four corners all the way through to the base. These are half inch rare earth metal magnets. I'll put a link in the description where I got mine. We'll move the base, we'll flip our jig over and we'll take a square and we're gonna hit each one of these points and make an X. That will give us the center. So we'll come to this side, get right up to the edge and draw our line. Then we'll flip this over and we'll do the same thing. This is the exact center right here of this half inch piece. We'll do that with the other four corners now. We'll hit each one of these points with a really thin drill bit. I might go with a 16th bit or even smaller than that. Before I forget, we need to use an awl on each one of these centers. We will want to drill all the way through. With all these drilled out, we're going to clamp it to the base. Obviously want to make sure that all four corners are lined up. I'm gonna do it on the front and the back, but I'm not gonna put a lot of pressure on it. We'll use this like a giant template. We'll drill each one of these holes out so that just the magnet is able to fit inside. And that's a little bit low, but that's good. Now that I've found what I'm looking for, I'll go ahead and lock that in place. And now we'll do the same thing with the base. If we put the base on the circle jig, it looks like we can still use the place where we locked it last time. Now we'll mix up some epoxy. I'm gonna separate these in twos. I'm gonna start from the bottom, put my first two in, and just go around like that. We don't wanna flip these over, we wanna make sure that they're all the same direction. I'll go ahead and add some epoxy to the top. Now we'll add the jig and we'll flip this over and do the same thing on the bottom. Now we'll add the other one back on and then we'll add a clamp to each corner. And if we look at the sides, we don't want any space between the two jigs. We have the T-Track right here. I'm gonna face this towards me. I've got a sheet that you can print out. It's free, it comes straight off my website. And it's gonna help us map out the sections that we need to cut out on the top of this. We'll take our ruler and we'll put it right on the corner over here. And we're gonna measure over one and one fourths. And now we'll move over to two inches. From here, we'll go to two and seven eighths inches. And now we'll come over to three and one eighth and then three and seven eighths, and finally four and five eighths. Now we'll take a marker and we're gonna mark each one of these spaces. After the one and one fourth, I'll add my marker here and just wanna go right up to that pencil line. Then after the two and seven eighths, then finally the three and seven eighths. When we stand this up, we'll go ahead and carry that over to the other side. If we're looking down at this, we wanna cut this section here down to five eighths of an inch. These two will just go down to the half inch area, but this one has to go to the five eighths. 
We'll go ahead and take this off now, take this over to the table saw. Okay, I'm here at the table saw. I've raised my blade so that at the very zenith, it is five eighths of an inch. And now I'll go ahead and line this up so the tooth sits right on that black area. I'll run this through just cutting that one groove right there. Obviously be careful, don't put your hand up here because it will be cutting straight through it. The best thing to do is to use a push block. Now we're gonna lower this down to a half of an inch. At a half of an inch, we're just barely cutting through the plywood. And now we'll line our teeth up again. And again, be sure that you use a push block. Now we'll go ahead and put this back on. Again, this is the area that we cut out 5 8 which is gonna be right over the T-track. We'll again slide it on carefully. The T-track bolt that we put in should be right in the center of this groove. And the hole that we cut out in the sliding miter arm should be visible and it should be right up to the edge of both sides. Now I'll set my fence so that it's a quarter of an inch away from the blade. I've got my blade at about a half of an inch and I'll go ahead and run this through. I've got my thin strip jig so that's an eighth of an inch away from the blade. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut an eighth inch off that quarter inch that I just cut. And that's my piece right there. Now I'm gonna cut this so that I have two pieces of this, but they're basically gonna go on either side of the bolts. And then they'll be glued down on the sides. As you can see, they'll just go in like this. And I'll add a couple clamps to lock it in place. We'll let that dry and we'll come back. If you remember in the previous video, I talked about butting two pieces together. Now we're gonna work on that. I'll find the center of that line, which is maybe a little difficult to see, and it's a quarter of an inch, so I'm gonna look at the eighth inch mark. And I'll draw a little mark, and I'll use an awl on that center. I've got some plastic here that it's a quarter of an inch, and I want to inlay it into the bottom, and I'll draw a line across it, that way I know where the line is on the ruler. I wanna drill a hole that's an inch in diameter on the bottom side, but I'm only gonna go down, like I said, a quarter of an inch, which again is the thickness of my plastic. And now that this is at the quarter inch depth that I was looking for, I'm gonna switch my one inch Forzner bit out with a three quarter inch Forzner bit. And now I'll cut a one inch square off this plastic, which just means I'm gonna make a one inch by one inch square. With it clamped in, we're going to use a razor or a sharp edge, and we'll draw a line across. And there we go, and for end, this will go inside of here, and our ruler is on the other side, so we'll be able to find out exactly where our miter arm needs to go on the ruler. I found a washer that is an inch in diameter. I'll put it on the top. Now it's important that the line that we cut is on the bottom. That will get us as close to the ruler and we won't have to worry about distortion. Before we glue that in, we're gonna work on the center pin here. I want to add a quarter inch bolt through here, but obviously if I were to put a nut here, it wouldn't fit. So I'm gonna drill this out with a tapering bit and I'll drill it out to a half of an inch, which this is exactly just about perfectly a half of an inch. And now I'll add a little bit of epoxy on the outside of the nut. Now I've got this upside down. We wanna put the nut in and push down. We want this to be flat against the table because we don't want it to be at a different angle than the top of this. I'll go ahead and glue my viewfinder in. Again, I'm gonna make it so that the scribed part is at the very bottom. We'll let this sit and cure and we'll come back. Now we'll assemble this. Our T-bolt will go inside the track. Then we'll add the sliding miter arm. Next we'll add the circle jig. We'll make sure it's square and then we'll add the knob to the top. Now wherever we put this, 
we'll lock it down. Then when it's time to use this, we'll put it on the mark that we're looking to cut. And again, this is all gonna be multiplied. So if I go on six inches here, it's gonna obviously be 12 inches. Seven inches, 14 inches. The circle capacity is, goes from about two and three fourths to a little bit less than 16 inches. The final thing that we'll need to do is to take a bolt, and uh, this is a quarter inch bolt, and it'll go down into that nut that we attached to the arm. So we need to cut this off so that obviously we can stick our piece of wood on top. And there we go. We'll go ahead and screw this in. We'll take a square and we're going to find the center by connecting our diagonals. I'll use an awl. And you'll wanna make sure that however big you want your circle to be, that you cut it to that length. So if you want a seven inch circle, it needs to be seven inches this way and seven inches this way. We'll grab a quarter inch drill bit and drill this out. In this example, I'll make a nine inch circle. So I've got this set at four and a half inches. I'll put this through my bolt. If you have a thinner blade, like a much thinner blade, you could slide it in here and then just sit there and spin it around. Because I have a much wider blade, I can't do that. But that's one of the drawbacks that I had with my last one was that you were really limited to the size of blade for the jig. This we can use a blade as wide as we want. One other thing that I'll add is that when you cut, you have to put your hand over here. I've said this in the last video, the miter slot is where we wanna put all our pressure. If we try to put it over here, it won't move. It has to be pushed this way. It's at this point when we've cut most of it all off and we've got just a little bit of a jagged edge left, we can bring it up to the blade and we'll just spin it around until we clean it up. And there we go. We've got a nine inch circle. Now, if you don't like the hole in the center, stay tuned. I've got another way to do this where you're not drilling a quarter inch hole through the center. In this part of the video, we're going to add the safety bar as well as our turntable. This is a, a much better way, I think, of cutting circles as we'll be able to pinpoint the center a little bit easier, as well as creating circles without a hole in the center. To get started with the turntable, we're going to start with a square block that's no less than three inches by three inches. I actually made this three and an eighth inches. I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna connect the diagonals. That way we can find the center. Now we'll drill the center out with a quarter inch spread point bit. Now I'll go ahead and put the post in and I'll slide the miter arm over to an inch and a half and I'll lock it down. I'll put my block on here. I'll go ahead and cut this into a circle. Now we could just add this on now, but the problem that you run into with band saws is that they actually pull down the wood. So if we had this all the way over here, the problem would be that it would actually pull down and it would be dangerous. We don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a strip over here, which will give us something for it to sit on top of. That means that we'll need to cut out another strip that's a half inch wide, that's just as long as a circle cutter jig, and the plywood needs to be just as thick as our circle. If I set it on here, I am good. To keep this in here, we're gonna put some blocks here and here. So we need to find out what the exact width of both of these places are so we can cut some scrap that will fit on the underside and it'll just fit inside like that. If I measure this first one, 13 sixteenths. And this one is slightly over three quarters of an inch at it looks like 13 sixteenths. I went ahead and sanded these a little bit so they fit inside both sides and I'll make them flush to the end here, as well as to the surface on the top. Now with both of these in, I can glue the safety bar on the top. I'll add just a little tiny bit of glue. I'll wipe a little bit off. Before I add the bar, I'm gonna raise it up just a little bit. I'll put the bar on top and push down. I'm not gonna touch either one of these, but I'm gonna put my clamp on the side. Obviously not on the magnets. We'll clamp this and give it a little bit of time to dry. Now that both pieces are done, we want to make sure that we take this stud and cut it down below the surface of this. I'll take this off and take this out. As you can see, I cut it a little bit below the surface. It really doesn't matter, but there we go. Now there's a couple things that I like about using this turntable. The biggest reason that I like it is that I can actually tape this 
to the surface of whatever circle that I want to cut. And I'm not adding a hole to the bottom of it. Sometimes you want a hole, sometimes you don't want a hole. With this, I don't have to worry about making a hole. My last circle jig had a little tiny pin that kind of eliminated needing the hole, but then I had a hard time finding the stock and putting it on the jig. What I like about this is I can add an X and then use an awl to mark the center. I can add my double-sided tape. Then I'll take my brad point bit, I'll set it through here, then I'll just peel these off. I'll put the points inside of the hole that I made, and then I'll just slide that down. Now this is ready to be cut. I'll go ahead and put this on, and I'll start cutting. And there we go, we'll take this off, take the back of it off, and we've got a nice clean circle that has just that little bit of a mark on the back. Now, if you really don't want to have any kind of mark, you could just tape this to anything and you wouldn't pinpoint the center like that. Anyway, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you might like to make in the future. Give me some suggestions on maybe what I can do to make this better. I really value your input and would love to hear what you have to say.